Jaya Ratha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Ratha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Ratha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Chana Valla Bam Kiri Vardhari Gopi Chana Valla Bam Kiri Vardhari Gopi Chana Valla Gopi Chana Valla Tere Vada Tha Yashoda Nandana Prachachana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Prachachana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Prachachana Ranjana Prashodana Ranjana Prachachana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Jaya Ratha Matava Kuncha Bihari Jaya Ratha Kuncha Vihari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Narayanam namaskrityam naram jayvanarottamam Devim sarasvatim vyasam tathujyadhtirayet Nashta prayeshu apadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya Bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtikir So reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Kanto 4 um, Chapter 25, text 3 The text chapter is entitled The Characteristic of King Puranjana. <clears throat> Prachina Bharisham Kshatta Prachina Bharisham Kshatta Karmas Karmas Vashak Karmas Vashakta Manasam Karmas Vashakta Manasam Narado Dhyatma Tattvapya Kripalu Pratya Bodayat Kripalu Pratya Bodayat Prachina Bharisham Kshatta Prachina Bharisham Kshatta Karma Shvashakta Manasam Karma Shvashakta Manasam Narado Dhyatma Tattvakya Narado Dhyatma Tattvakya Kripalu Pratya Bodayat Yes, please, recite. Prachina Barisham Kshata Prachina Barisham Kshata Karma Sakta Manasam Karma Sakta Manasam Narado Yatma Tattvanya Narado Yatma Tattvakya Kripalu Pratyagotaya Kripalu Pratyagotaya Prachina Parisham Shatta Prachina Parisham Shatta Karma Sasatta Manasam Karma Sasatta Manasam Narado Dhyatma Tvagya Narado Dhyatma Tvagya Kripalu Pratyabodhaya Kripalu Pratyabodhaya Vaishnavis Prachina Bhari Shamshata Karma Sakta Manasam Narado Jatma Tatvakya Kripalu Pratya Bodhaya Prachina Bhari Sham Antu King Prachina Bhari Shat Kshattaha Ovidura, Ovidura. Karmasu, Karmasu. In fruitive activities, activities. Asakta, Asakta. Attached. Attached Manasam, Manasam. With, this With this mentality Naradaha, Naradaha. The great sage, sage. Narada Adhyatma Spiritualism Tattvagyana One who knows the truth Kripalu Being compassionate Pratyabhodayat Gave 
instructions. Translation and purport by Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Gijaya. Hmm. While the princes were undergoing severe austerities in the water, their father was performing different types of fruitive activities. At this time, the great saint Narada, master and teacher of all spiritual life, became very compassionate upon the king and decided to instruct him about spiritual life. Purport. As pointed out by Prabhu Dhananda Saraswati Thakur, a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya, Kaivalya, or merging into the Brahman effulsion, is just like going to hell. He similarly states that elevation to the upper planetary systems for the enjoyment of heavenly life is just so much phantasmagoria. Phantasmagoria. <laughs> This means that a devotee does not give any importance to the ultimate goal of the karmis and yanis. The ultimate goal of the karmis is promotion to the heavenly kingdom, and the ultimate goal of the jnanis is merging into the brahman effulsions. Of course, the jnanis are superior to the karmis, as confirmed by Lord Chaitanya. Koti karmanish, karmanishta mathye eka jnani shreshta. One jnani, or impersonalist, is better than many thousands of fruitive actors. Chaitanya Charitamrita Matya 1947. Therefore, a devotee never enters upon the path of karma or elevation by fruitive activities. Narada Muni took compassion upon King pra Prachina Barishat when he saw that the king engaged in fruitive activity. In comparison to mundane workers, those who are trying to be elevated to the higher planetary system by performing yakyas are undoubtedly superior. In pure devotional service, however, both karma and jnana are considered bewildering features of the illusory energy. Om Ajnana Timiran Sya Ginan Jana Shalakaya Chakshuram Viditam Nina Das mai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chitanya Namo Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Gathamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyas Cha Kripa Sindhu Viva Cha Paditanam Pabhanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Rana Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gauru Bhakta Jinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hari Hari While the princes were undergoing severe austerities in the water, their father was performing different types of fruitive activities. At this time the great saint Narada, master and teacher of all spiritual life, became very compassionate upon the king and decided to instruct him about spiritual life. Okay, Hare Krishna. So, with this chapter we will enter the fascinating story of King Puranjana, which is an allegory, and which is spoken by Narada to the king, um, because he was so much bewildered by these fruitive activities. And that's described in this text today. Um, Shri Vishnuva Chakri Thakur comments to this text while Shiva taught the Prachetas his song that's what we were studying the last couple of weeks Lord Shiva is teaching the Rudra Gita to the Prachetas so while Shiva taught the Prachetas his song Narada was teaching their father Jnana, Vairagya and Bhakti through the story of Puranjana so we can see different devotees are preaching, <laughs> different preaching fields. <laughs> Shiva is taking care of the sons and Narada speaks to the father. Mm -hmm. Without completing the story of the Prochetas, Maitreya now speaks about their father. Narada was merciful thinking, this king who is in the dynasty of my dear devotee Dhruva is enamored by karma. I will save him. So uh, Narada saw that the king was too much 
busy with um, just performing some ritualistic activities, uh, karma kanda. So means um, just performing different sacrifices, also you know, different, um, yeah, killing animals and, and offering different sacrifices just to try to get some to some heavenly planets or to, for enjoyment. And as was described in the purport, this is very much condemned by the Vaishnava school. And Prabhupada explains that there is different types of uh, personalities. Of course, there is the um, those who just want to enjoy the karmis in this world without following any Vedic scriptures, and then then are those who want to enjoy taking the help of Vedic scriptures, the karmis, and then there is the jnanis who understand that there is nothing to find in this world and they search for liberation. Then the yogis they want to have some mystic perfection, and finally the bhaktas who understand that all of this is illusory. And in Chaitanya Charitamrita we find this Krishna Bhakta Nishkama Atteva Shanta Bukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Sakali Ashanta that it's only the, um, <coughs> the Nishkama the Bhakta who is actually Shanta, he's the only one who is peaceful. Because all the others, the Bukti Mukti Siddhi Kami, like those who search for enjoyment, those who search for mukti and uh, siddhi, they all have some desires. Because they have some desires, they are not peaceful. So the conclusion is, if you want to be peaceful, don't have any desires. <laughs> if, you, if you're free from desire, then you can be peaceful. Is that possible, to be free from desire? Why not? Yes, we are not stones. <laughs> Prab <laughs> Prabhupada says we are not like stones. You know, if you're a stone, then you don't have any desire, right? But because we're living entities, we always have desires. It's quite natural. So then how become desireless? Desire. Yeah, yeah we, sh we should desire Krishna. We should desire the pleasure for, like, how to please Krishna, how to give pleasure to Krishna. If we develop that desire, then we become free from desire in a sense that we don't have our personal desire. We only want to please Krishna. And then we become Shanta, very peaceful. But those who go for anything else than that, um, they are in illusion. And Prabhupada quotes um, from Sri Chaitanya Chandramritam, which is a fascinating book um, that I also still want to study more deeply. <laughs> it's like one of these books that I have in my shelf, <laughs> and I know it's good, but I haven't gone through it so in detail but anyhow um, this one uh, is quoted by Prabhupada mm. let me see Kaivalam Narkaya Te I'll just go to the English maybe easier let us glorify Lord Gaura Sundar, whose devotees, enriched by the priceless treasure of the Lord's merciful glance, consider mukti, liberation, as coveted by the yogis Kaivalya, or the liberation of merging into Brahman, Sahutya, to be equal, equivalent to residing in hell. So any kind of, any kind of liberation, uh, by the devotees see any kind of liberation, equal to hell. And you know, it sounds quite an extreme statement, isn't it? Because liberation means you become free from duality, you become free from all pain, from all suffering, from all worries, from all fear, anxiety. So liberation seems to be something quite blissful. You know? They speak about ananda, you merge and then you just... But they would say no, it's like going to hell. Okay, and then also um, to these devotees, the goal of fruitive workers, the pleasures of paradise in the heavenly planets, is as an em, em ephemeral as a castle in the air. Castles in the air, it's also uh, illusory. It's kind of something that not really exists. Um. 
So this is stated here. And um, so we'll, we'll try to understand this a bit better. Let me see here. Read part of the purport, the Tika. The devotees of the Supreme Lord, recipients of the mercy of and grace of Sri Chaitanya, are glorified in this verse. These devotees having received the fabulous wealth of Sri Gaurasundar's merciful glance. So that's the uh, that's the requirement. How how to see liberation as hell and heavenly pleasure as something illusory. You you require the mercy of Gora Sundar. That merciful glance. Um, consider even mukti, liberation as hellish suffering. We pray at the lotus feet of that supreme being, Sri Gora Sundar. The use of the plural form stummaha indicates an an exultant mood brought about by realizing the immense fortune of Sri Gora Sundar's causes mercy on the recipient, something that must necessarily be shared with others. Thus, the use of the plural. So, it's like, yeah. Mm. To those devotees who possess this spiritual treasure, Kaivalya is worse than hell. Just as for the residents of different hellish planets, the possibility of experiencing the bliss of Bhagavad Bhajan does not exist. Similarly, in Sahucha, Mukti or Kaivala, such bliss is absent. And here we get the first hint why devotees see liberation as hellish. Because those who live in hell, they don't have access to Bhagavad Bhajan. They don't have access to devotional service. They, they can't feel the bliss of Bhakti because they are so much suffering. So similarly, those who attain liberation, they are not suffering, they are experiencing bliss, but they don't have an access to experience the bliss of devotional service. That's why it's also hellish. Does it make sense? <laughs> yeah. So, um, there is other ways uh, to describe that same topic and um, let me see mm -hmm. um Goswami describes in the um Bhakti Samtar Sindhu he describes Bhukti and Mukti as two kinds of Witches, yeah, witches, like a yeah, witch, and she is kind of <laughs> put, putting you, putting some spell on you, right? What, what uh, a witch? What is she's doing? She, she puts some spell on you, and you're kind of, mm -hmm. you know, something you don't realize. You be, you're becoming illusioned by a certain spell. So, and it's quite interesting that uh, don't have the quote here exactly, but but yeah, as long as one is bewildered by the spell of these two witches of Bukhti and Mukti, one never will be able to actually um, experience devotion or, or be able to practice pure devotional service. Because um, both Bukhti and Mukti is actually very unnatural to the soul. In, in the, in the, if you're influenced by the spell of Bukhti, then you think, I'm the enjoyer, and how can I find pleasure in this world? which is complete illusion, because first of all, we are not the enjoyer. <laughs> There's only one person, that's Krishna. And second, we are not in a place to enjoy. The, the place is uh, to call Ayama Shashvatam. It's a place full of misery and it's temporary. So it's quite a foolish endeavor to try to find happiness in a place which is full of misery anyway. <laughs> but of course, we all have the experience. We still try to find pleasure in this world. But actually, this world is not meant for that. This world is meant that we get a chance to reform ourselves and establish our relationship with Krishna. But if we are um, influenced by the spell of bhukti, then we always try to see some pleasure. And then we think that, okay, this world may be not so good, let us go to heaven. Then we can try to enjoy there. <coughs> but then the other side is Tiaga, um, where you think that uh, I, I need to renounce the it doesn't work here, so I should renounce and then find the pleasure of liberation. But again, it's it's about me, it's about my own pleasure. And also, um, for actually for the Vaishnava, there is no question of Boga and Tyaga. Because 
uh, as we already mentioned, I'm not the enjoyer, so there's no question of boga. But I'm also not the proprietor. And if I'm not possessing something, how can I re renounce it? No? So we, we think, I have to renounce this, I have to renounce that. But if you understand that we are eternal servants of Krishna, then we don't have, we don't possess anything, and therefore there's no question of renunciation also. But rather, everything we see, we should engage in the Lord's service. Okay, so then, um, actually in the previous chapter that we already studied together, we found a beautiful example of um, King Prithu offering a prayer, how he is also not interested in Kaivalya. Do you remember that prayer? Mm. <laughs> okay, I will, I will try to help. Yes, how many years? <laughs> Millions. Yes. <laughs> like I have two big ears, but Prithu ones have millions of ears. Can you imagine? Like <laughs> just ears everywhere. Yes, that's the amazing, uh, amazing prayer of Prithu Maraj. That he says, uh, okay, you want to give me benediction? Let me have uh, millions of ears. Okay, let me see. I've got it here. <coughs> These are text, uh, chapter 20, text 23 to 25 or 6 or so. Pritaru vacha varan vibhutvat varadeshvarat buddha katam vrinite guna vikrayatmanam ye nara narakanam api santi dehinam tan isha kaivalya pate vrine nacha. My dear Lord, you are the best of the demigods who can offer benedictions. Why, therefore, should any learned person ask you for benedictions meant for living entities bewildered by the modes of nature? Such benedictions are available automatically, even in the lives of living entities suffering in hellish condition. My dear Lord, you can certainly best of merging into your existence, but I do not wish to have such a benediction. So Krishna is addressed here as Varad Ishvarat. <laughs> we know that name, <laughs> Varadeshwari. That's Srimati Radharani, right? Who, who gives blessings. And then, then there is the Varadeshvarat, which is the Supreme Lord Krishna who gives benediction. Um, so he is addressed here as the Varadeshvarat and also as the Kaivala, Ka Kaivalya Pate, the bestower of merging into the existence of the Lord. So Krishna can give benediction and he can give the benediction to merging into him also. And Prithu says, I know that you are can give you can give this kind of benediction, but I certainly will not ask for this one. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't want this. So then what does Prithu want? Nakama yenata tat apyakam kvachin nayatra yusmacharanabushavaha mahatmanantra ridhayan mukto mukha chayut Vidatsva karna yutam esha mevara. My dear Lord, I therefore do not wish to have the benediction of merging into your existence, a benediction in which there is no existence of the nectarian beverage of your lotus feet. The beverage, no? What is a beverage? How you say in German? A drink, a cocktails, and a, you know, some, maybe also alcoholic drink or something, <laughs> intoxicating something. So, and, and Prithu says, you know, why should I get liberation? There is no beverage, there is no drink. What kind of drink? <laughs> the drink coming from your lotus feet. I want the benediction of at least one million years. At least. <laughs> at least one million years. <laughs> For thus I may be able to hear about the glories of your lotus feet from the mouths of your pure devotees. I want to hear from your pure devotees. And that's, I found it quite amazing that, you know, here he has the darshan of the Lord and what does he desire? He wants to have the association of devotees to hear more about the Lord, who is already, he's seeing them. <laughs> <coughs> and Shri Vishnu Chalrit Thakur comments, he, he paraphr like he paraphrases Prithu's point. You have asked me to ask for anything 
But in general, I do not desire anything. But particularly, I never desire, even in the worst misery, the benediction of liberation. That's also amazing. Even in the worst misery, no, imagine some very miserable situation. No, I don't. Some physical pain, some heavy accident. You have pain, or or some. No, no, your beloved leaves, and you have some. Any any kind of pain you imagine, but he says, even in the greatest pain, I don't ask for liberation. I don't want to be freed from that pain. Why? In liberation, there is no honey of your lotus feet. Okay, here it says honey, beverage, honey. No sweetness of talks about your qualities. How are these topics described? They are coming from the hearts of the great devotees and dripping from their mouths. So this, this, the nectar of the, your lotus feet is there in the heart of the devotees. And it comes out, <laughs> drips from the mouth of your devotees. And that, that nectar, I want, to, I want to relish that nectar that comes from the mouth of the devotees. Those topics are being sung out of great bliss experienced in their hearts. So they have so much bliss in their hearts and then when they speak, the nectar comes out. Then what do I want? Give me millions of ears because there are unlimited talks about the Lord's qualities. I cannot give up even one, on, one among all the topics being sung anywhere by anyone about any subject concerning the Lord. Out of great greed, I desire an infinite number of years. <laughs> so I have become a very greedy fellow. And we know usually greed is one of the three gates to hell and we should, you know, anger, lust and greed should be given up. We should, we should, not, we should not be greedy. But here, when it comes to Krishna Kata, we should become very, very greedy. Let me hear more, let me hear more. <coughs> and uh, maybe we can hear a bit about the glories of Krishna Kata. Why, what is, why it is so glorious, this Krishna Kata? Uh, while I was reading the biography of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasat you know, it was very much emphasized how he was always speaking, he was always preaching. You know, it, it op often happened that, uh, you know, in the late evening Bhakti Siddhanta would sit with some, with some students or some guests and just preach to them for hours in the late night, 11 o'clock in the night, still preaching to them. As soon he would open his mouth, Krishna Kata would come out. That, that, that was Bhakti Siddhanta. He would always speak Krishna Kata, always. Whenever he opened, it was it was pure nectar. It was some tattva, some philosophy, always emphasizing. So there is a few statements um, from Bhakti Siddhanta about Bhakti Siddhanta. Hari Kata was Srila Saraswati Thakur's life, issuing forth from his lotus mouth as natural as breathing. Just people breathe in and out. So he was speaking Krishna Kata all the time, very naturally. And so this is Bhakti Siddhanta. I have had the opportunity to hear and discuss these topics since the beginning of my life. And we understand Bhakti Siddhanta was surrounded by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, his father, Gorki Shodas Babaji, you know, all these great personalities. So he always, he grew up with hearing Krishna Kata. I've been discussing these points for 50 years now. <laughs> In great detail and at every moment throughout the 24 hours when awake and even while slumbering, <laughs> while continuously discussing these topics, eventually my body will wear out and fall down. So I will just continue speak Krishna Kata, Krishna Kata, and at one point my body will just <laughs> be finished. And, you know, but I, as, long, as long there is some life in this body, I will just speak Krishna Kata. And then he says, I will glorify until the last moment of my life all that I have learned from my gurus. Why only one mouth? Let me have unlimited mouths and an unlimited lifespan to unlimitedly glorify the unlimited qualities of Krishna's devotees. So here is the same, <laughs> same idea, you know, like Rupa Goswami says, I can't understand this two-syllable Krishna, how much pleasure have they given me? You know? Let me have millions of tongues to, to speak this Krishna, Krishna, so much nectar. 
So Prithu says, give me millions of ears to hear that katha. And Bhaktisiddhanta says, give me uh, unlimited mouths, mouth to, to speak the unlimited uh, katha of the Lord and hear of the glories of the Lord's devotees. And then about him, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasa revealed that Hari Katha is the Swarupa Shakti of Harinam. Just as Krishna is properly worshipped not alone, but with his Swarupa Shakti Sri Radha, recitation of Harinam is incomplete and improper unless accompanied by hearing Hari Katha. And that's a nice point that uh, we worship Radha Krishna. Hari Krishna. Hare Rama. We always have Radha and Krishna together. So similarly, um, there is Harinam and Hari Katha. Um, Hari Nama, the Nama of Hari, and Hari Katha, the glorification of Hari. They are going together. They should always be together, just like a couple, like husband and wife. They're always together, and they should not be separated. So sometimes devotees they are very much into. Um, Harinam, doing Kirtan, uh, like today we have uh, whole day Kirtan, but then how much devotees are into Harikata also, we have to also hear, we have to read scriptures, read Prabhupada's books, hear Bhagavatam. So that needs to go together. Um, it's the Harikata is the Swarup Shakti of Harinam. Then about him again, he stated that wherever Harikata is spoken is a Tirta, and that Harikata is the guardian of a genuine sadhus in a world where everything that surrounds one is ready to become an enemy and attack the unprotected. So we know, uh, Holiness Keshav Maharaj nicely explained the word of Tirta. Do you remember? Maharaj spoke about it in the Bhakti retreat. Tirta, of course, is a holy place, but it also can be explained as a, a the t word Tirta actually means like a, a, a bridge or a, like a crossing, crossroad, or a point where, you know, like an airport in some way, you know, you go to an airport, at, at the airport, from that airport you can go anywhere in the world, you know, it's like a, it's like a point where you can go somewhere. So similarly, Jaya Jagannath Baladev Subhadamarani Ki, Shashigoni Taiki. Similarly, the, um, the Tirta is, a, is like a place it's like a bridge, it, it, it can bring you to the spiritual world. It's like a crossroad where you can go from the material world into the spiritual world. That's a Tirtha. And that's how we go to Tirtha, we go to holy places where Krishna has manifested his pastime, his leelas. But here uh, Bhaktisiddhanta says that um, any place where Krishna Katha is spoken, that becomes a Tirtha. Why? Because that also becomes uh, you know, a bridge to enter into the uh, presence of Krishna, wherever Krishna Kata is spoken, and Krishna is present. And Krishna Kata is like a guardian uh, of, uh, like, the, like it, it's, it's in, in this material world, it's a very dangerous place, on, where on every step there is some danger, and people can become envious, people, you know, can attack us, but Hari Kata is like a, pla is a place where protection is there. Moreover, he stressed that the taste for and faith in Harikatha is the very root of Hari Seva. And with sight, Harikatha is Kevalam Paramam Paramam Shreya. Harikatha alone is a supremely beneficial activity. <coughs> so it's the root for Hari Seva. Because when we do devotional service, we cook for the deities, we do wor deity worship, we do Harinam, book distribution, whatever we do, management. But if we don't hear about Hari, if we don't understand the philosophy properly, then what is the meaning of the service? You know, we, the service can very easily become just karma, mechanical. But when we hear, then we understand why we do se seva. That's why it's the root of Hari seva. And then a very famous statement. Um, I do not consider bad a day covered with clouds, but one devoid of discussing the nectar of Krishna Katha. And uh, Srila Gorgovina Maharaj would also, in the, along the same line, would make that point. You know, some people say, today there was a tsunami, there was an earthquake, there, was, there is a war, people die, a very bad day. I say that day without hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam without Krishna Kata, that's a very bad day. <laughs> <coughs> so 
So you're all very lucky because we, are, we, we listen from the Bhagavatam. So it's an auspicious day. But those who are not sitting here, who missed the class, <laughs> very bad day for them. <laughs> so whenever you miss them, bad day. Huh? <laughs> yeah. That's why Harikata is the root of Seva, as we just said. It's important. So these were some statements by Bhakti Siddhanta about the importance of, of Harikata. So then, what is the result of that Kata? And that's also described in the next shloka. Sa uttama shloka mahan mukho chito bhavat padamboja sudha kananila smritim punar vishmrita tattva vartmanam kuyoginam na vitaratyalam varai My dear Lord, you are glorified by the selected verses uttered by great personalities. Such glorification of your lotus feet is just like saffron particles. When a transcendental vibration from the mouth of great devotees carries the aroma of the saffron dust of your lotus feet, the forgetful living entity gradually remembers his eternal relationship with you. Devotees thus gradually come to the right conclusion about the value of life. My dear Lord, I therefore do not need any other benediction but the opportunity to hear from the mouth of your pure devotee. So, another analogy is used here, that the nectar from the lotus feet of the Lord is like saffron particles, and that saffron particle comes out from the mouth of the devotees. <coughs> it's carried, it's carried by the Shapta Brahman, by the, by the transcendental sound vibration of Krishna Kata, these saffron particles are carried in that Krishna Kata, <laughs> And, and that nectar can enter our ears. And, and what, what is the result of such hearing? The forgetful living entity gradually remembers his eternal relationship with the Lord. And that's what Krishna Kata is all about, right? Um, I just read it somewhere. Mm, yeah, I don't have it. But, mm, Prabhupada speaks. Mm, let me see whether I can find it. Anyway, I will paraphrase it. But Prabhupada makes a point that um, you know we are all sleeping, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago. We are sleeping in the in the lap of the ugly witch Maya. <laughs> we are sleeping in, in you know thinking in, in the illusory dream of, of material existence. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come. He's, he says, "I have brought the medicine of the chanting of the holy name, and uh, we should wake up from that sleep." And then probably in the purport, in the same chapter, he says that the the voice of a sadhu uh, and the the words of a sadhu are that awakening voice that that wakes up the conditioned souls and and reminds him of his relationship with Krishna. And that's usually what we hear in in, in classes. You know, you're not the body, no, you're the internal servant. You're meant to serve. Uh, Krishna is the enjoyer, like these things. But when we hear these things, then that kind of wakes us up and reminds us, yes, yes, actually, uh, true happiness is only found in relationship with Krishna. And when thus our original consciousness becomes more and more kind of awakened, then um, we start offer prayers to the Lord, such as uh, Prithu Maharaj, who only desires millions of years to hear Krishna Kata. And I like to end with one song of Bhakti Nuntaku, who expresses in the same um, mood. We have presented this so many times, but it's it's so nice. I'll just yeah, read a part of it. Prabhu, it's Prabhu Tava Pada Yuge. And you can find it in the app also. Prabhu Tava Pada Yuge. Prabhu Tava Pada Yuge Morani Vedana Nahi Magi Deya Sukha Vidyadana Jana Nahi Magi Svarga Ara Moksha Nahi Magi Nakari Partana Kona Vibhutira Lagi My Lord, I submit the following prayer at your lotus feet. I do not pray to you for physical leisure, for learning, wealth, or followers. I do not pray for heaven or salvation. I do not pray for any of these opulences. 
So again the same thing. No bhukti, no mukti. No interest in all of these things. So then what, do we, what does Bhakti Thakur want? In whatever birth I take, wherever my karma leads me, let me sing the glories of your holy name, birth after birth. So just let me chant the holy name. That, that's my only desire. This alone is my cherished hope, my aspiration, my prayer at your lotus feet. Let causeless and uninterrupted devotion awaken within my heart and flow towards you. No, let that bhakti, that, that, let that bhakti be in my heart. No, that's the only, I want to have bhakti, I want to sing your names, I want to sing it with devotion, with bhakti in my heart. And that bhakti should flow towards you. Let, my, let me love your lotus feet as much as now, uh, I, I, I now love sense gratification. Transfer my affection from the object of the senses to your lotus feet. Now we have a we have a very spontaneous attraction. To <laughs> it's very spontaneous. We don't have to do much, <laughs> it's whether we want or not. But there is a natural attraction to the object of the senses, that which promises us sat satisfaction and, and, and enjoyment through the body. So that's very natural. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, please let me transfer that natural attraction to your lotus feet so that I feel naturally attracted to you. In danger or success, good fortune or disaster, let me remain equiposed. And let, me, uh, let my affection for you increase day by day by the influence of the holy name. That's also a nice point. No, I want to make progress also. Let my, let my affection, my bhakti should grow. Day by day I should become more uh, have more affection to, towards you. By what? By the influence of the holy name. By chanting nice choppa, by taking shelter in your holy name, I should become more and more attached to your lotus feet. And I, I, I want to perceive this you know, progress. I want to see how I become more attached. And then he ends, whether I live as birth or beast in heaven or in hell, let the humble bhakti note always cherish bhakti in his hearts of hearts. And that's all he prays for. Hare Krishna. That's where we want to go. <laughs> we might not yet there be there, but uh, that's the aspiration. Understanding that bhakti is only the only thing that gives us satisfaction, everything else will not be giving us what we really search for. We have five minutes left. Some comments? Maha Krishna Prabhu. Vira Krishna Prabhu. Some don't know. Very wonderful research about it. Hare Krishna. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. Unless they are a Shaligram Shila, then it's, yeah, then it's yeah. different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are very alive. <laughs> I got one of these in my room now. <laughs> He has taken control of my life, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're they're different, <laughs> but uh, ordinary stones probably give the example of. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the purport, prophet says, yes. Question, question is about Harikatha. Uh, we uh, here in Bhagavatam. Uh, many verses uh, which there is no uh, name of Krishna at all maybe and some philosophical verses but uh, why we um, consider it like Harikatha mm -hmm. and where is the border between <laughs> Harikatha and uh, Prajalpa I mean, yeah. like this <coughs> Hare Krishna um, okay mm -hmm. When there is, first of all, there is two kind of harikata. There is there is kata um, about Krishna, and there is kata spoken by Krishna. Right? Like Bhagavad Gita is also harikata, although it's, I mean something is also, also about about Krishna, but it's mainly spoken by Krishna. So that's also harikata. And then in the Bhagavatam, um, yeah, why don't we just jump into the tenth chapter and and hear? 
beautiful pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Why do we have to hear nine cantos of Shrishti Lila? <laughs> of course, if you, you know, like Keshav Madhava Prabhu, he will, he will tell you the glories of Shrishti Lila, <laughs> the nectar of it. There is a lot of nectar there also. But some of us may feel like, why do we need to hear them? There was the Mahatattva and then agitated by the time factor and the gunas and then this came up and then this came up. Why do we need to know all these details? Or, mm, yeah, the glories of Vaikuntha and, and, and how big Krishna is. And, um, but yeah, we understand that uh, before we can enter into that Madhurya aspect, that sweetness, we first need to understand the Aishwarya, the, the glories. We need to understand how great the Lord is, right? Um, and the description of this creation, the description of how it was created, the description of the different Purushas, and even the, the, all the different pastimes, um, you know, different avatars, and also the different devotees of the Lord, and even the different dynasties, and different princes and the sons, and oh, sometimes you have chapters just with names, but they are all related to the Lord, and that's why it's all considered to be Harikatha. And it's said that, um, the Prabhupada makes a point that um, for one who actually has love for Krishna, for him the description of creation and the description of how Radha and Krishna kissing each other is same sweet, is similarly tasteful. <laughs> yes, the same. And, and, and Prabhupada makes the point, uh, Bhagavatam or the scripture are just like a sweet bowl. Wherever you bite, it's sweet. No, it's, it's not that you bite here and it's sour and you bite there. It's, no, it's a sweet bowl. It's every, everywhere sweet. And that's the proper understanding. Uh, sometimes, and I remember I heard once one devotee, I'm not telling the name, she was saying, Oh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, this is ABC. It's, I know, I, I have read it. Now it's, now I only read know, the Goswami literature is about the tenth camp. And that is a very unmature understanding, because if you actually love have if you actually love Krishna, you will relish so much from Bhagavad Gita also. You know, it's the it's the direct word of Krishna. You will appreciate so much. I don't know whether I answer your question, but to some degree I hope. when you answering it's remind me uh, the story when uh, <coughs> Rupa Goswami visit some village and uh, people came to him and uh, they just talking about minding some minding uh, mm -hmm. deals uh, but uh, Rupa Goswami uh, connected to Krishna like uh, he Somebody come and said, "Oh, my cow is cow is ill, and what to do?" <laughs> he immediately this? Yes. he connects to the yeah, yeah. shastra. Yeah, because of his love. Yeah, to yeah that's, the, that's the actually shastra chakshu. You know, whatever whatever you see, you immediately connect with shastra, and and you can remember Krishna. You see it through the eyes of of, of Krishna's understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, time is up. Shall we stop? Maybe we should stop, huh? You, otherwise you can ask. I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Temple president, you have to tell. <laughs> We, we end here and you can ask uh, during breakfast. If you have more questions, we can discuss during breakfast. Okay, thank you very much. Grantaraj Sriman Bhagavatam Ki Chai, Shri Prabhupada Ki Chai, Premanande, Hari Hari Bo. Thank you.
just lifestyle to qualify. But time is over. Uh, it's 8.30. <laughs>